Benayakin asks, what's your take, uh, so moving to pluralism, what's your take on Austrian economics and whether it should be included <laughs> in the umbrella of, we're just doing controversial topics, um, under the umbrella of pluralism, um, especially with regards to like working with RE and how, how it's treated in RE. I'm laughing because this topic is controversial, but it's only controversial to a very specific group of economics nerds. But it's really <laughs> controversial to them. It's, it's so controversial to them that it's one of the most controversial topics around. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I say let them in. I don't, I, I don't have a problem with Austrian economics being taught alongside other pluralistic schools of thought. And I don't, and I, and I, and I know that some of the people uh, asking that question absolutely loathe the Austrians. I think I think loathing is a good basis for intellectual engagement with something. Yeah, um, I'm very curious about it. Yeah, and um, it will certainly lead to more like fiery discussions. I don't think teaching Austrian economics means that you are training a generation of Austrian only economists. I mean, in a pluralistic curriculum. I mean, if you were to ask, should we teach only Austrian economics? I would say no. In the same way that yeah. I'd say no, we shouldn't teach purely yeah. neoclassical economics either. I mean, I like. I'll, let me answer the question as well because. I want to. Um, so, I mean, there are areas of Austrian economics that I would not teach except to laugh at them. Um, praxeology, in particular, is just utter nonsense. I don't understand how anybody can believe that. Um, having said that, there are also good things in Austrian economics. I mean, going back to the study of history, there's an interesting history of like private banking, free market banking, they call it, right? There's a whole interesting history in there that I think actually is worth students knowing. Um, so, I mean, my, my answer would be like half of it, uh, the half that isn't praxeology. Uh, but I can't imagine teaching my students praxeology with a, with a straight face. It's just ridiculous. Did you ever do <laughs> praxeology in, in philosophy or anything? No, Well, it's because it's too... It, nobody ever pays attention to it because it's ridiculous. I think you have to teach... Also, you have to teach the ideas that have influenced the world, and Austrian economics has, has, has influenced large parts of the world. The, the, la the last thing I would say is that, you know, if you take a Chinese context, being an Austrian economist in China is very, very, is very, very radical and quite dangerous. And there are... I have met... Um, intellectuals in China who are really attracted to uh, to Austrianism, I think mostly because of the you know, complete difference of outlook that takes them from an extremely kind of um, centrally, con centrally controlled political system. Yeah. And your intellectual tastes are the product of your uh, of your everything else, you know, of, of, of your political and social context as well. Mm. It's interesting how um, things like rethinking economics have evolved in um, in, in former communist countries as well, I think, because, I mean, I remember um, speaking to people from Vietnam because there was a Rethinking Economics chapter in mm -hmm. Vietnam. And yeah. the thing is, obviously, taking the radical stance there is kind of like what you said. It's like more in line with being an Austrian or a free market economist and completely against Marxism, right? So they, like, they yeah. hate Marxism, right? And that's their orthodoxy, even though they do live in a capitalist country, like they're taught. Marxism from an early age, so they've got a completely yeah. different dynamic. Whereas we're we we're, we're not taught Marxism at all, and we want like some of it on the curriculum. Um, it's just really interesting the context. Coming soon.